Welcome back. Police are seeking the public's assistance in identifying and locating two male suspects who robbed a female of her cell phone and a substantial amount of cash early Tuesday morning. Police reports indicating that shortly after 8 a.m., the victim, while at her home on Dumping Ground Corner, opened the door, opened her doors to two males who presented themselves as law enforcement officers. It is further reported that once inside the home, the males, both of whom were allegedly armed with handguns, robbed the victim of the mentioned items and fled the area in a gray Japanese vehicle. Police are investigating and are appealing to members of the public to always be vigilant and on alert. Minister Additionally, if you suspect that someone is impersonating will a police lead officer, and request to see their badge to reduce the and number call 911 or 919 to have a marked vehicle also please come to your to assistance. Announce to improve working partnerships with this year, the like road the traffic department has seen a number of changes and adjustments to its operations all in an effort to improve customer service and collection efficiency. In this next report, we hear some of what the public can expect from the road traffic department in the coming months, including the ability to report taxi and bus drivers who break the rules. The minister responsible for transport, Jobeth Kobe Davis, the member of parliament for Elizabeth, says the road traffic department is expected to continue to be a major source of revenue for the government during the next fiscal period. In the 2023-24 budget period, the road traffic is projecting an income of more than $56 million. As indicated in Head 54, the department is allocated over $6.9 million for recurrent expenditure. In 2022, the department launched and began the issuance of commercial driver's license. With the introduction of the commercial driver's license, one can no longer use your regular driver's license to operate a commercial vehicle. Meanwhile, Minister Kobe Davis says the public bus system will also see improvements to ensure that buses and other public transportation vehicles are properly equipped for the road. The road traffic department will be using a new automated system to examine vehicles. In support of a stronger vehicle inspection regime, the department intends to move from a manual inspection process to an automated system and digital aided approach. That would include testing of brakes, suspension and shock systems, wheel alignment and light intensity. The inspection regime will not inconvenience or prohibit vehicles from being on the road. Madam Speaker, I want to repeat that because I know when we raised this before, there were many concerns from the public. The new inspection regime will not inconvenience up or prohibit vehicles from being on the road. Rather, the process is a new process will be designed to ensure that our vehicles are safe and they are road worthy. Here you can see where the cars will drive through a mobile testing unit. This is how it looks. And on the ground, what you have is the testing of your shocks, your wheel alignment, your brakes. This is done in minutes. Last month, a fake document regarding the rental or loaning of one's private vehicle caused a public stir. Although she spoke to it briefly before, today, from the floor of the House of Assembly, Mrs. Kobe Davis took the opportunity to officially clarify what the amended law states, particularly as it relates to rental cars. The Road Traffic Amendment Bill 2023. I was quite excited when it raised so much public discussion with the wrong bill, because then that brought the discussion of the real bill, the real amendment, and the purpose of it. And the bill reinforces the prohibition on renting private vehicles to the public and introduces a fine of up to $1,000 for persons violating the law. Under the law, vehicles being rented to public must have a self-drive license plate. Yes. You have to be in order. The transport minister was also proud to announce the appointment of Linda Moxie as the first female to lead the road traffic department. The Onego Traveler cargo ship with heavy fuel on board that sank on December 29th last year near the Hole in the Wall Lighthouse, that's South uh, Abaco, is still in the process of being removed. Attorney General Senator Ryan Pinder giving an update on those efforts says the barge has been at the site for a month and a half so far. 
um, 144 steel coils, so those are big steel coils out of the cargo hold, um, and have transported those to Freeport uh, for storage. Uh, and now they're back on site and they've started to cut up the ship to, to, to move it. They have about 12% of the ship they're reporting as being salvaged so far. Uh, they have had certain challenges with weather, as you can imagine, you know the weather we've been having uh, lately, and they're in, on the ocean, really on the ocean side. So um, the, the, the winds and the waves really build up when the weather gets bad there. So they, they've had some delays because of weather. Uh, but the barge is on site, um, and I, re I received a report last night uh, that they've salvaged 12% of the vessel so far. On February this year, the Attorney General said the government had given the ship's owners 45 days to remove it from the Abaco waters. When asked if the government has given a new deadline, Attorney General Pinder says this. The deadline was when it wrecked. So, I mean, we're kind of under the mercy of, of the process um, and the weather. Um, and then once that ship has been salvaged and removed, then we can put divers in the water through the Department of Environmental Protection and Planning Act to make an assessment to see the scope of damages um, that may have occurred to our reefs and other ecosystem. And then at that point in time, we will assess um, either litigation of fines or, or some other penalty regime. Government allocating $1 million for the beautification of downtown, the downtown area very badly needs it. This much coming from Minister of Tourism Chester Cooper, who called the current state of downtown a disappointment. However, just outside the port is the disappointment that is downtown Nassau. We will, under no circumstances, allow Bay Street to remain in the state that it has languished in for decades. The poor state of our capital city center is even more glaring now that the port is there. And I am delighted to tell you that Senator the Honorable Randy Rule has been assigned full time to monitor downtown upgrades. We are working with the Downtown Nassau Partnership to create and to execute an overall plan for downtown. We already begun stakeholder engagement. We've devised a plan with quick wins and wins with a short, medium and long term horizon. In efforts to improve our tourism product, a greater emphasis has been placed on creating a clean and safe environment for visitors and stakeholders. The tourism minister sent out a strong warning for those that cause problems and engage in illegal activities in the downtown area. Now, with the help of the Commission of Police, we're seeing greater police presence that we hope will be consistently visible. We're working on a clean, safe environment downtown. I want to be very clear about this. Drug peddlers, mm -hmm. hackers, mm -hmm. hagglers, prostitutes, harassers, thieves, and troublemakers yeah. are not welcome downtown. They are, in fact, not welcome anywhere, Madam Speaker. <laughs> But there will certainly be a zero tolerance downtown and the mission of the police is to remove them. Please understand, don't seek to complain to me or anyone in this administration about it. You've been warned and it has to be done. With 30,000 visitors per day, there are enough ways to make an honest living in a manner that adds value, and we will support you in doing so. Deputy Prime Minister Cooper said the government will deal with vagrants in a proper manner. Working with the Ministry of Health, the police, the Department of Social Services to manage vagrancy. We are sensitive to, to the plight of the mentally ill and those who suffer, suffer from addiction. And with the recently passed Mental Health Act, we will manage this issue compassionately. Yes. We will ensure that vagrants receive the care they need, and they will not receive that care wandering about and sleeping on the streets or derelict buildings. We can do better as a country to support our vulnerable, and we will. 
The Department of Environmental Health Services is also on board to help manage rodent infestation in the downtown area. And that'll do it for your JCN Evening News. Once again, I'm Jorino Saunders. Thank you so much for joining us. This segment of the news has been brought to you by Sun Oil Limited. Thank you.